Hey, Mike here with Mike's Bags. Today I am reviewing the Ambush by Buffalo Boards. Let's go ahead and dive in and start with the design. Uh, this, I think this is their kind of their standard. When I think of the Ambush, this is the design I think of. This is kind of their regular design. They have a lot of special designs. They're putting out more and more different designs, different colors out there. They actually have a colored version, multicolored version. I really love when I had to buy these. This was all they had was in monochrome, so I picked these up. And, and I'm fine with these. Uh, but yeah, go definitely go to their website, check out all the designs they have, all the colorways, because they have a ton of different things out there. And Buffalo's does a great job of their designs. They have, they're one of the, my, my favorite companies when it comes to design, and they do a phenomenal, phenomenal jo job on that, and the Ambush is no exception to it. These are ACL Pro Stamp, and these are from last year. These are a 21-22 stamp bag, but they're also Pro Stamp for 23. And as far as I know, nothing's changed from this Ambush from last year this year, so I, that's why I'm kind of reviewing the older set that I had. So let's dive into the materials here now. Slow side on this, this is that... Uh, Viking fast side, Pro Advantage fast side. It's a seven speed material. It's actually the fast side that they use on the Nomad. Uh, it's seven speed material. It is a wonderful material. It's fast, but controllable. It's very soft. It's very hole friendly. The, the one knock to it is when boards get a little damp, stick from humidity, it does slow down, but it slows from a seven to like maybe a five. So it's still, it's still very playable. It's not unplayable like some materials. Just know it does slow down in those conditions, but it's wonderful for, you know, dry to fast board conditions it still plays really well so seven speed and slow side fast side this is that pro sniper a deadhead fast side nine speed i talk about a ton you know it slides up the board in conditions it pushes through anything it's a very fast material so you've got a seven and nine speed bag in fact these two materials uh, this material combination here these two materials is very popular there's uh, pretty much every company out there has a bag that has these two materials because they're just they're two of the most popular materials and they're great materials the template on this, this is a I, I, this is a medium template. In fact, I think Buffalo's kind of gone to this template in all their bags, and they, they've they've changed their their process, and they've gone to more of an automated system, and so all their bags have that same template. This is a medium template, it, it, but it feels and plays like a smaller template bag. So it's, it, I, I tend to want to call it a small template bag. But I, I'm still gonna say it's that medium template, and it's 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 not a full bag, but it's got quite a bit of full fill to it. It uses that flat disc fill. I think Buffalo uses this disc this fill in all their bags. At least all the bags I've reviewed so far has this in there. I don't know. I don't want to say 100% of their bags do, but most of their bags have this flat disc fill. Gives it a great hand fill. Just enough right amount of full, fullness. That flat disc fill, you have an awesome hand fill to it. It still has some flop. Not a ton of flop. Um, but because it's not a larger bag, it's not going to be that floppy. Now, I tend to like my faster bags to be a little floppier, a little larger for grabbing the hole when it goes by. But I do think playability-wise, this amount of fill fits perfectly in this size template bag. And I'll get to that in just a second here. In fact, let's go ahead, you know what, let's dive into playability right now. Let's go ahead and jump into playability. And this is a bag that's pretty straightforward. It's designed for putting bags in the hole. You're not getting fancy with it. You're not throwing a lot of blockers up there. You're not trying to cut. You're not trying to flop. You're not trying to roll. This is you're putting bags in the hole. You're sliding them up. If someone throws a blocker, you're either getting around it or you're airmailing over it. Um, you can even push through it. But really, where this bag shines to me, the, the beauty of this bag, when and I talk about the fill and the template and the way it all fits in, is this bag is wonderful for getting around other bags. So if your opponent throws a blocker up there, I don't I don't have to push through it, right? I can step out, whichever side I'm on, step out and come into it. And basically, I come at, at, the, at their blocker angle, and I can just almost either bully the bag out of the way or it'll hit, spin around, and go in. This bag is wonderful because of the template size to get it around bags on the board, to get around cleanly. And what you're doing is when my opponent comes up there and they throw a blocker, especially an aggressive throw on my side of the board, if I can get around it and leave that, now it makes a very tough collect for them. The idea of them putting a blocker on my side of the board is they're gonna, they're expecting me to either push through it and collect it or at least bully it back in their lane. If I can leave it there, either with an airmail, which this bag is wonderful, the template is wonderful for airmail. You can hit clean airmails all day long and leave bags hanging on the hole. It's wonderful for that. But it's also wonderful for, like I said, just kind of bumping into and really getting around. Now, the downside to that is if you throw a blocker, you got to make sure it's kind of in that middle or on your side. If you get aggressive and leave a blocker on that side, it's really tough for you to collect because this bag is not going to come across real well and collect the bag by just clipping the corner. If you got to collect, you got to come more in the middle to push through. So if you leave a block, which honestly, you shouldn't be leaving too many blocks. If you're leaving a block to this bag, it's, it's either boards have gotten really sticky and slow or you're just, you left it a little short. Um, but but these bags are fast enough. They're not going to cause, you know, they're not going to make great blockers. So if you want to play a blocker style game, you're going to want to go to the different bag from Buffalo, not necessarily the ambush. But if you do leave a blocker, you just got to be a little more intentional about collecting that more in the middle. Where some bags you can catch the corner and clip. This bag just, 
I think because of the template and everything about it, it wants to hit and just go around. And so this is a bag that I really like to pull out when I'm facing against an opponent who plays a dirty style game, who throws a really sticky bag, and maybe they're a little better. I like to play a dirty style game, but sometimes if an opponent, I know they're, hey, they're better at that than I am, why do I want to play to their strength? So I want to switch to a bag, something like this, so that when they throw that sticky blocker up there, I don't have to push through it. I don't have to collect it. I can go around it. I can get around with this bag and leave that blocker there and make them collect it. And if I do that enough times, eventually they're gonna stop throwing that blocker because it's gonna cost them points, right? If they can put a blocker on my side, of the, my side of the board and I can still get my four bags in and then they leave that and they can't collect it or maybe they try to collect it and miss and then I end up with two bags on my side. Now I've got four points and in and, and each round, I start getting two or four points every round because I'm on a blocker, they're gonna stop throwing that blocker and now I have a clean board and I can run bags in all day long. And if I'm facing a sticky bag player and I'm and it's a, it's a it's a bag for bag game. I'm going to win that most of the time. So that's the kind of mentality I have. And that's where this bag really shines is that the situation I pull a bag like this out. Now, because it's not a larger floppier bag, I talk about, you know, landing zones. You know, sometimes I like a faster bag, a little floppier because it gives me a little bit wider landing zone because I can just grab, dip that corner and grab the hole easier. You got to be a little more precise with this bag um, because it, it doesn't have that flopness and it, it because it's not a larger bag that if you're a little off left or right, if it doesn't grab that hole, it's going to it's gonna shoot off, either set behind the hole or go off the back of the board. Um, and just, again, just something to be aware of. Now, and that's where I, I do think, again, you're playing with the opponent that looks stick to your bags. If they've got bags left around the hole, now you've got bumpers to bounce off of and you don't have to worry about, you know, so much missing the hole and play, and, 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 and getting by. You can bounce off their bags, use their bags to your advantage. Um, I do think too as well that this is a bag, the, the, the beauty of this bag as well and these materials is you can play them in pretty much all board conditions. Like I said, when boards get sticky from humidity and the moisture on the boards, this does slow. This becomes sort of a 7, 9, looking more like a 5, 8, 4, 8, 4, 7 type bag, right? Depending on how sticky it gets, but it's still playable. So you can still make it, you can still play it. You can even flip it over and just throw a fast side the whole time if you need to. And honestly, when I'm playing with this bag, most of the time I'm throwing slow side. This slow side is, is just a wonderful material. The only time I flip over to fast side is if I'm trying to push through more than one bag, or as I mentioned before, if it's my last bag and I just want to make sure I'm collecting and following, I'll throw fast side to make sure it does go in. But again, I'm not throwing too many blockers with this bag. I don't recommend it. If you want to play more of a dirty style, blocker style game, Buffalo has better bag options for that. This ambush is not what that's designed for. This is for definitely playing a clean game, putting every bag in the hole, putting your 12 points in, outscoring your opponent. And it does a phenomenal job of that. I really like it. These both pictures are very hole friendly. You're not gonna get a lot of bags hanging on the hole. If you do, it it, it doesn't take a lot to collect them because they're they're pretty much gonna droop in on their own. Um, and as I mentioned, it's also a wonderful airmail bag as far as going cleanly. So if you've got your opponent's bags hanging on the hole, because it's not a large template bag, it can hit those backside airmails very clean. It can run through the you know the, the front side airmail. You can leave bags hanging and put your bag in and not fear of having to drag one of your opponent's bags in. So it, it does a great job of that. Availability on this bag now. Buffalo does a really good job of keeping bags in stock. In fact, I think pretty much anytime you go on the website, you're, they're going to have ambush and stock. They may be sort of certain colorways, sort of certain designs, uh, maybe there's special releases that sell out pretty quickly. But for the most part, you're going to be able to find a set of ambush on there. That they, they, they do a great job with their inventory. The one complaint, the one gripe I have about Buffalo bags, it's not just the ambush across the board, is their pricing. They're on the higher side of pricing. Um, I think Buffalo is still trying to figure out their price. I know they were right around that 110 and 125. They went to 140 for a while, but that 140 included shipping. But now I went just before I, I did this, I went and I looked and most of their bags have been marked back down and, and, and they ambushed all over the place. They were, I think, had some for 125, some for 115, some for 100. They had some less than a 100, some of the older designs. So they're, they're a little bit all over the place. But I will say, you know, when they're up in that 125, 140 range, you know, you can get the swag bag rubies. You can, you know, for like 80 bucks for a set. You can get the fire heat for, I think, 70, 70, 75 dollars for a set. Same materials, it's very summer in the bags. And so it's tougher for me to justify paying, you know, 125, 140 dollars for a set of bags when I can go buy another high quality bag for cheaper. Not saying again, not saying it's not worth it. And, and you know, as long as Buffalo is selling bags, they can price them what they want. But that's my one knock. I've never been unhappy with a set of Buffalo bags that I bought. Um, their customer service is top notch. So, you know, you are buying into a high quality product and a a, a, a great company. If you want a set of bags and if if they're not the price you want, if you wait, they're probably gonna come on sale at some point and you can probably buy them at a cheaper price. So, but I, I do recommend the ambush. I love it. I had a blast with it. If you're a fast bag player, I think you're gonna love it. It's a phenomenal bag. So I thank you guys so much for the support and thanks for watching.